Hi everybody, I just wanted to jump back on here real quick because there was a few things that I wanted to say. Pizza was quick and easy to prepare. Like I said, got lunch tomorrow. And I can do the other half and have lunch later in the week or a simple, quick meal or whatever sometime later in the week. Some things that I wanted to talk about for this week. First of all, there are stores that are closing everywhere. Doesn't matter where you are in America, in the UK, in Canada. Well, I don't know totally about Canada's situation, but I know for sure in the United States of America, we have a lot of those bigger stores that are closing. We have, you know, for years, for the past few years, we've had stores like Kmart and JCPenney, Sears, those places closing, which blows my mind. Some of those places are closing because they were very well utilized, from what I could tell. But apparently they weren't making the profit that they had hoped to make or whatever. But now we've got Walmart closing. Um, during the pandemic and, and the riots and everything, the Walmart closed that was in St. Paul. Um, which is not far from me, one that I would frequent. Uh, now, this last Friday, the Walmart closed in... Brooklyn Center, north of me, which leaves only the one that is in Bloomington as one that is accessible for Hennepin County, anyway, and uh, maybe parts of Ramsey County, I'm not sure, which covers several cities within the state of Minnesota. Um, this causes what I like to call a food desert. A food desert is when there's not enough resources or resources are just not available for people that live within a general population area, excuse me, I've got hiccups, um, to be able to access food and needed supplies. Um, and if it's not within walking distance, really you're kind of in a food desert. <laughs> because we know vehicles can go out power grid can go down, a lot of things can happen really quickly and turn people's lives upside down. So if you don't live close to work or, or the grocery store or whatever, um, it's challenging. This last year we had an all, one Aldi close that was like a storefront and it had condos above it. And then they moved down the street where there were already other grocery shopping areas like Cub Foods, um, Target, which has the groceries, you know, the Dollar Tree, all those other places were down the street. I thought that the one that closed was like in the perfect area for me because then I didn't have to go too far to get the things that I need, but now I have to go even further <laughs> um, if I were going to shop at Aldi that day. Um, but this causes a challenge for many people, especially if someone is disabled or has transportation or physical challenges or whatever the situation may be where they're not able to just get out and go get that food that they really need. Um, for six or seven months, it's been quite a while, I have been working on with the you know, conversing with the University of Minnesota and um, a food network group to bring food supplies in on a retired city bus. It was retired. Um, they gutted it out, put all kinds of crazy fancy food designs on the outside of it, which I hope that I uploaded that video to YouTube, I'm not sure if I did or not. I know I uploaded it to TikTok. So hopefully I also uploaded it to YouTube about the uh, the mobile market, as they call it. And it's a bus, like I said, that's been gutted out. And they're bringing food and toilet paper and all sorts of things. It, it, it becomes a grocery store in a retired city bus. And they take EBT for people that use EBT or use 
a credit or debit card or they take cash and you know they have set locations they can't cover everywhere because the need is so great and the resources are so small again another example of why it's a food desert but they were able to assist a lot of people at the location where I was at last week um, and what we thought would take an hour ended up taking three hours which shows a greater propensity of the need of the food in that area. So, very happy that it's been successful and they'll be coming almost every week, and unless it's a holiday on Monday, they'll probably show up. And it's an opportunity for people within that area to be able to come and access the food and get the things that they need. And they had meat. Um, I know they had chicken in there. I didn't get a chance to go in there because I was trying to <laughs> do damage control on the outside because there were so many people that were lined up. I had to go get some numbers and give out numbers to people because people start wanting to get in front of other people in the line and know it's my turn and, and I want to get in and it's my turn to get the food. So there was a great, a great need. So... And I thought I'd at least be able to pop my head in. Most I was able to do was step up on there, look around the corner, and see, you know, the different produce on the one side. And see the toilet paper and um, sparkling water and different things. But with it being the full length of a regular city bus, it had a lot of stuff that I just couldn't see. And I couldn't see the full process and everything. But... It's a success. And if you hear about something like that coming to your neighborhood or your community, I'd say try to go for it. And if you hear that they're going to show up at 3.30, I'd say you should probably be looking out or near the door at 3 o'clock. Try to be prepared half an hour before. Because as I was saying, these people that were there Last week, we heard about it, you know, because I did advertise. I wanted as many people to know as possible. And they were there, <laughs> ready and waiting. Um, so it was challenging. It was a long process getting it set up. But I'm really grateful that it worked because it helped feed a lot of people within the community. And this is going to go throughout the year, which is awesome for that area. Um, there's other things. It's that time of year when there are other programs out there like Appetite for Change, if you've heard of that program, or the Community Cooks program. I did several videos on them last year on my unboxing of the food. Um, they have started up again for this year. And the thing is, you have to look for them on Facebook. You can either Google them or look for them on Facebook. Looking for their page on Facebook is the easier way. And you go and you request to join their page. And when you do that, then they'll ask for you to give your email address and your phone number. And when they open it up for people to sign up, they would send you an email. You must respond pretty quickly. I'd say immediately. Because spaces fill up really quickly, and this is really good, healthy, nutritious food. And I'll be doing the <clears throat> the food box unboxing again this year and do one or two recipes per week that you're welcome to, to prepare the meals along with me. Well, do the unboxing. I'll talk about the ingredients listing on the two recipes that they have in the box. And there's, of course, other things that can be done with that food in the box. I like the program because... It not only helps me, it helps me to eat healthier stuff and to not be so tempted to go to every fast food or drive through that there is because those places have food that's full of lots of sodium. We already know that. It helps me to eat healthier. It helps me learn more about spices that I didn't use for particular reasons or whatever. And the produce is always fresh and good from local farmers and it's always I, I like to say to support the local farmers 
um, in your community. And the meat is fresh. So if you're doing, you know, animal-based meat or whatever, it's a good thing. Sometimes they actually, they put tofu in once last year. Yay for me. You know, but I did work with the animal-based meat, especially if it's like chicken, because I can eat small amounts of chicken. But the other stuff, I could prepare and share with my kids and my grandkids. So it's a win-win. Because I'm not just like, got one that's all down myself. I'm sharing it with others. I have neighbors that I can share with too. You know, if, if they are in need of some food supports or whatever, I'm able to share that with them too. Which is one of the one of the nice things about this program. Because it's not just helping me. It's helping my community, my my family, my neighbors. So that's something that I'd say it's time to be on the lookout for right now because we are approaching the end of April and May will be coming up in another week. A little over a week, a week and a day or two. Um, which also means that the farmer's market will be opening. If you have a farmer's market in your area. If you're somewhere like Arizona, you might have farmer's market all year round. But I am up here where it's like snowy or cold five to six months out of the year and then we have what seems like fall <laughs> another five months out of the year basically and then we have a month or two of spring and summer and and you know our seasons are goofy here so we have long winters comparatively equal uh, summers actually and then fall is actually I said that wrong it's actually like a month or two maybe if you're lucky and spring is comparatively short because technically while well, the rest of the world celebrated spring on March 20th I believe this year it was still snowing <laughs> it was one day where we're having you know 83 to 87 degree temperatures and then the next day sleet hail turned into snow weather advisories you know and we've got potholes galore so but i'm not going to even go there because we can talk about potholes all day and how they tearing up the cars but who has to pay for those car repairs yeah so we've got the situation with walmart we have more uh, farms. There was like, I made a note. There was a market fire in Bangladesh. When I'm saying this stuff is going on around the world. Keep, Bangladesh? Really? Why would there be a market fire in Bangladesh of all places? And we've got all these trains being derailed with the toxic chemicals. we got the stuff that's here happening in Minnesota where... Toxic chemicals were in water, local water that flows downstream right to my neighborhood. Um, and the company who's responsible for that mess said nothing. It, we found out about it on the news four, four or five months later, because that happened like last November. December, January, February, March. So, like four and a half months later, we find out about it on the news. Which means, stuff has been in the water for quite a while. That's kind of why I'm happy that I have my Berkey. And no, you know, my video is not sponsored by Berkey or anything. But I am someone who really appreciates having the Berkey. I like having something that's going to filter out all that other stuff. Um, people want to, you know, argue about, well, does it work for how many years before you have to change the filter? Well, I'm just glad that it's working. I can save up a little money, get a backup supply. I can check it when every time my water level runs low, I check. To, it's just like if you have a fish tank and, and you, or if you have an aquarium and you've got that set up with the charcoal filters in your aquarium for your special fish you know that 
that charcoal setup is not going to last forever. You know you're going to have to do some changes to that. You know that those fish are going to have to come out. You're going to have to clean all those rocks. You're going to have to clean that tape. You know that this is a part of the process of being responsible and caring for those living beings. But you also have to care for your living being too. So that's something that you'd have to have to do. But you don't want to use Berkey. There are other other products out there that are doing the same thing. They're just giving it a different name, honestly. But I appreciate having the Berkey. It was the first one that I had heard about that did such a fantastic job with what it's doing. So I use that, but I'm going to digress because I can give it a yap a long time, you know. So we've got the issues with the water. And when things happen, you know, they just hush, hush it down, keep on moving like nothing ever happened. You know, there's a man behind the curtain like in, in the Wizard of Oz, you know. Watch out for that man behind the curtain because he's still there, whether you want to believe it or not. And not everything is gumdrops and lollipops. Being prepared, is it's a serious issue. I mean, you could choose to not be prepared, but if you choose to not be prepared, don't knock at my door when the power goes out. Wanting to use one of my power supply packs or or my emergency lighting, my solar lighting or whatever, or, or wanting a solar panel. Sorry, I'm not going to be available to help you because i got to help myself. It's like when you're on an airplane. You're on an airplane and the steward or stewardess stands up in the front and they're giving you directions. The bathroom's over here. You know, that seatbelt light is going to go off, blah, blah, blah. And if there is any turbulence in that plane, an oxygen mask is going to drop down, right? You are to first take that mask, put it on yourself so that you can get some oxygen. Then, after you've put it on yourself, then help the person next to you. Because if you can't, if you go to try to help somebody else, you, you might be out of luck. You have to put it on yourself first. You have to take care of yourself first. You have to. It's just how it is. You just have to. So first take care of yourself and then help the person next to you. If they're un incapable of doing for themselves. So. Making sure you have food. Making sure you have water. Now, you want to go and buy a gazillion water bottles? That's on you. You got to have a place to store all of that stuff. And know that it's going to be adding plastic to the environment. Unless you're taking all that plastic from them bottles afterwards, melting it down, and turning it into the thread, and making shopping bags or something out of it. Not saying that you can't do that. People have done that even with, like, the grocery bags. The shopping bags that are... The thin, thin plastic that they charge everybody a nickel for now if you use it in the store. They'll take those, pull it or cut it into strips, and then they'll braid it together or crochet it. And they'll make a heavy-duty reusable bag so then they're not having to pay. Just, you could take an old pair of jeans that don't fit anymore, cut the legs off, turn it inside out, hem the bottom leg parts up, and then take some of that from the leg portion of the material and make straps so that you can carry that as a grocery bag. You can get creative. Come on now. There's lots of things that you can do with what you have. You have to be more creative and learn how to use what you have. And if you have specific skills, you need to be learning to use those too. So, just wanted to talk to you real quick about the food desert and food resources that are coming up. If there are other resources that are coming up in your area, feel free to share down in the comment section below. If you don't want to share because you want to make sure you're in the front of the line, more power to you, but it would be nice to be able to share amongst communities so people can have an opportunity to have food to eat. Oh, Also, please give a thumbs up to this video. It helps it to get out to more people so more people can learn about what's going on, and share and subscribe if you have not subscribed. And you thought I was done talking. I'm not done talking yet, but real soon. The next video I do will probably be real short because 
I know not everybody can tolerate these longer videos, but there's a lot of stuff that I want to say, so I'm trying to get it all out in this one. Living with Chronic Kidney Disease. I do have a booklet out. It's very small. It's thin. It's very easy to read. It's just step-by-step -step basic what you need to know to take care of your body. If you've been given a diagnosis and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Nobody told me about this. Or if they didn't say anything to you and you're looking at your test results and you're reading, I have a GFR of 49. What does that mean? This would be very helpful for you. So if it's something that you're interested in, um, just leave a message for me in the comment section below. Or, I've got 50 copies of these. Happy to give them out because I don't want people to be in the position that I was in when I found out. But, you know, it's not too late until it is too late. So, you can either leave a message in the comment section below or you can email me at peopleandtheirstuff at gmail.com. All those words together, no space between them. Peopleandtheirstuff at gmail.com. And pretty soon I'll be coming out with a part two to this book that talks about uh, what the Bible says about these foods and things. Because everything that we need, whether you believe it or not, it's in the Bible. It's really there. And the things that I have learned from the medical society regarding what I have in, in this little booklet, it goes back to everything that's in the Bible, which is... Awesome, because that's how God is. He always gives us everything we need. And if that makes you feel uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. If you don't want to hear about any religion or hear me talking about the goodness of the Lord, it's okay for you to just like unsubscribe or switch to another channel or whatever. I'm not monetized anyway. Money was never the focus for all of this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made this book in a way where it's so amazingly affordable, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to control anyone's life. I'm just giving you some information. We know when Noah was building that ark, people thought he was crazy. But he was following what God told him to do. And if you look at it in that way, Noah was a prepper. Because he not only built the ark to the standards that God said to build it, because the rain was coming in the middle of that desert, Yes, it was a desert place. But he also gathered the animals in twos or sevens. And a lot of people say two by two. But if you really read it, some animals it was in twos. Other animals it was in sevens. Um, gathering them, getting them in there, bringing in the food. He had the food and supplies and everything that he needed that whenever he got everything up in that boat and the door closed. God closed the door. And then it started to rain. Then people were wanting to get on. But it's like, ah, nope. I was obedient to what the Lord told me to do. And I got prepared. And we're good. Sorry. But not sorry. And sometimes you have to be like that. Because there are going to be people that are going to come up. And they're going to say stuff. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to make jokes about what you're doing or saying. People joked about me being a prepper and then the store shut down. And people said, oh, you have food, don't you? I have food for me and mine. Thank you very much. You know, I'm also doing the indoor gardening, which we're going to start doing videos on that. Because I'm using a variety of options. Yes, even though I'm in what I consider multifamily housing, you know, it's um, a condo, which is basically like an apartment that you own. So I've got someone that lives above me, below me, and next door. I can't really plant. I couldn't really plant outside anyway unless I had permission from everyone in the association. The grassy area is not that big, and... The University of Minnesota came out and tested the soil and they said, don't eat anything that you plant out here because of the high arsenic levels in the soil. It's poisonous. It's not safe to eat. 
And I've also talked about this being an arsenic triangle in this area that I live in. I've talked about that before. But I've talked about that before as far as the arsenic that's in the air quality. And we all know in March, February, I was absolutely miserable. And in March, I ended up in the hospital because of said situation. But so I grow in my home. I grow some things in soil. And if you're interested in that, give us a like and mention it in the comment section below because I will respond, you know, if, if you do mention these things in the comment section. So I grow things in soil. I grow things um, in water. I have the water gardening, hydroponics as we call it, set up on a bookshelf in my dining room. I use the arrow garden. Um, I was able to get a couple of those for free from someone that had got them. And it was like a novelty thing. And then when they got bored with it, they were going to throw it away. And I'm like, no, don't throw it away. I'll take it. You can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. Be on the lookout for people that are giving that kind of stuff away for free because it's still valuable. Maybe not to them, but it's something that you can use within your own home. So I've got the arrow garden. I have what's called the veg box, which is my favorite, which was the first one that I had purchased. And I'll talk about this more in another video. And then I have uh, Clarenstein, which is like, it's like the veg box. It's just under a different name. It's from um, Swedish company or something. I'm not sure where that one is from, but it looks the same, operates the same. And it's a way of doing similar as what's in the arrow garden without having to repeatedly buy those pods that already have the, the starter, starter soil and the one seed in them, spending all that money, you know, so we're going to talk about those comparative choices because there is a more affordable way of doing it. And those are some things to prepare for. I'm going to shut this video down <laughs> within the next two minutes because I'm talking too much. But those are some things that we're going to be working on this spring and well into the summer. And I hope that you'll continue to join me in this venture. I do want to show you what I did with the seed that I planted in the winter. Oh, let me see if I can move this over. Oh, wait. And slide this big thing over so you can see. Uh -huh. Don't know if you can, can you see that? I know I've got my books and stuff everywhere, health and nutrition. That is the beginnings of an avocado tree. Eight avocados in the winter, and I had a seed left over, threw it in the cup. Then after a while, that back. After a while, I decided, you know, maybe I should throw a little dirt on it. I did. Roots started coming out of that thing. And I thought, oh, hmm. My sister told me that she, you know, ate some cutie oranges and planted a seed in a pot and then later in a bucket, which, like, I ended up having to move that as the roots kept growing, I moved it into that that hardware bucket, one of those larger ones, and I'll let it get as tall as that bucket will hold because it's going to stay in here. Now, do I eat avocados? I used to, but now with my the stage of kidney disease I'm in right now, there there's some um, question as to whether avocados are the healthiest thing for me to eat right now. I mean, and I know there are some doctors that say, yes, eat the avocados because they help with your blood pressure and they help with this and help with that. And then there's others that say, no, your kidneys won't be able to process that very well. I'm still growing it anyway. Because even if I can't eat anything that's grown on it, um, I have kids and grandkids that are able to. And even if no fruit comes from this tree, it's growing and it can grow as tall as the ceiling is in this room and it will provide oxygen. I give the carbon dioxide and it will provide oxygen for me. 
always good to have some plants around you if you want to breathe, especially I'm in the arsenic triangle, like I said. But there's the time. My time is up. Thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to talking to you again soon here. And remember to treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Always try to treat yourself the best that you can. Show love to your family, your friends. Be mindful of what's going on around you. Don't have your head stuck in the clouds so much. You know, you can't see the chemtrails anymore anyway. <laughs> Look around you. See what's going on around you in your community. You know, are there unusual sinkholes and things happening? There's one happening not, what, 10 blocks away from me? That was kind of scary. And it's kind of big. Um, what's going on in your community? Um, what do you need in your cupboards? <clears throat> if everything were to shut down right now, and this is April 23rd of 2023, would you have enough resources to make it from now through December? And I know some people say, oh, you only need three weeks worth of food. Some people shop every day or every other day. Oh, I'm going to the store. I'm down to the last two squares of toilet paper. No. We have to be proactive and think further ahead than that. Would you have enough to make it from now through December of this year? If the if the store shut down or the trucks weren't able to get through or all the food and supplies are out on a barge somewhere. Do you have skills for cooking, for sewing? for repairing things. Do you have, even if you don't have the skills, do you have books that explain what to do? Like, like first aid CPR manual. You know, the library actually gives these things away. They'll either sell them for 50 cents. There's like, dust or something in my eye I'm sorry or they or they give them away when they're upgrading to new stuff that's a great opportunity to look through what they have and say hmm I can use something like this not like you're hoping that you have to use it every day not like you're going to be doing any thoracic surgery or anything but emergency medical stuff Good to, it's good to have because you don't know when you're going to come up with any kind of issue. It's also good to have books that talk about um, foraging, backyard foraging with pictures, books with pictures so you know what is edible. So if you run out of stuff on the inside, you know what to do on the outside. But I also have a book that talks about the Great Depression uh, and how people survived through that. What did they eat? Because whatever's coming, it's like when a storm is coming and you can see that the clouds are getting dark further away. And then you can see that darkness coming closer to your area something's coming and not just the the great reset as they call it which is probably going to be the end of regular cash and the beginning of mandatory everybody using the digital currency i i i do believe that that's coming too what are you going to do now there are medical supply companies that were were giving out jabs for the Rona. Um, many people were told that they might lose their job if they didn't take it. Many people did lose their job. And now it's been in the news that they're saying, oh no, 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 we don't want anyone using that anymore. Because 
there it caused some health complications for many people. But now we're going to do something with a triple dose. And we want you to trust us. How do you feel about that? What do you say about that? And when will all this stop? It's just more signs of the times, in my opinion. And it's a day by day thing. And we have to be prepared for whatever comes up. I mean, or you can do whatever you want to do. But as for me and mine, and I know it's like I say cooking for one. Hashtag cooking for one. Yes, I'm mostly cooking for one, but I do have grandkids that spend time with me and that eat with me. I do have a cat that I take care of as well. And I'm in a community where we kind of look out for each other. So I choose to serve the Lord and I choose to be prepared. So, thank you for joining me. Sorry this went on probably a bit longer than some people will want, but um, it's all important information, and I hope that you'll join me again soon so I can show you about starting some seeds in soil and doing some things in water. Because the hydroponics that I have in the dining room uh, have a light system attached to them which gives it a sort of a normalcy and I can do some things there. But the gardening that I'm doing in the living room, and yes, I'm doing it in the living room too because food. <laughs> I don't just make everything and eat it all up at once. I make things and then I dehydrate a lot of stuff. I preserve stuff. If there's no access to vinegar, you know, because there's a vinegar shortage now too, um, it's not as big of an issue for me because I do dehydrate a lot of stuff, which shrinks down the necessary space and I'm able to do more. And I still get really good flavor when I prepare those things later. You know, I was able to make it all winter with the onions that I have. I still have a lot of onions left over. Dehydrated. And I'm sure my neighbors are thankful because they don't have to smell any other onions being dehydrated right now. And it only stinks while they're drying up. Once all the moisture is out, there is no odor. So, but we'll talk about that more later. Thank you again for joining me. And I look forward to talking to you again very soon.